The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up uh, 23, NASDAQ up 1, S&P's up 1, gold contract flat. 14.56 an ounce. We have silver up three cents, sixteen dollars ninety-three cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up fifty-two cents, fifty-eight dollars fifty-three cents a barrel. Notes and bonds are on the move once again, folks. You get the ten-year up seven ticks, one twenty-nine twenty-three. Thirty-year up twenty-two at one sixty twenty-four. King dollars up thirty-one six, trading ninety-eight three fifty-four. Euros at one ten. Yen is at one oh nine, and the pound is at one twenty-eight to one U.S. dollar. And we're kicking into Thanksgiving. They were moving that market around yesterday. Not bad. All the indices, record closes, man. Can't say much more than that, right? No, that's right. And, and the Dow is just underneath it. I mean, it's just, <laughs> man, it might have hit it today. Let's see if we got it. When you say underneath it, I think we had a record close yesterday. Uh, it might have been a record close. Okay. Uh, I just, yeah, yep. so so the high is what, 28.090? Uh, yeah, we're above it. You got 28.112. So uh, bottom line is that... Uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a Thanksgiving <laughs> trading week in a big way. Shortened week. Got to love that, too. Big numbers come out here. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, TD Ameritrade. Think or swim as we do each and every Tuesday, Thursday, Mon uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. There we go. <laughs> uh, don't forget, folks, Kevin has an outstanding show here. Every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. You want to understand option, option strategies, futures, great program. If you haven't test-driven yet the Thinkorswim platform, it's real easy to do. As you're sitting there watching uh, the program right now, just hit that banner, bring it up. It'll allow you to trade paper money. You can follow Kevin and his team every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, guys, this is, um, I think, a market that is really drifting. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, the bonds are actually moving a little bit today, a little bit more than I thought. But... This overall market, in terms of the four indices, is still just drifting. And I think the, the, the day that you may get some trade in this market is tomorrow morning. Uh -huh. Because you got some three pretty big data points coming out tomorrow morning. We're, we're, we're joking around. It's like a data dump right before Thanksgiving. Wow. You know, you got, you got GDP, durable goods, income and outlays all coming out tomorrow morning. So this market could move tomorrow morning. Today... If you're looking other than some individual names, I think Best Buy and Dix yep. and yeah. Dollar Tree are yeah. having some nice movement today. Um, but if you're looking for anything in the indices to, to, to do anything more than drift, I think you're being a little ambitious today. Yeah. Because especially with all that data tomorrow, I think people are just, I don't, like I said, I don't think they're going to try and move this market one way or another. But... Uh, you know, these are tricky markets they're, when you're at all-time highs because they're, 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 people are skeptical. And, and, and bonds, frankly, aren't giving you a reason right now to back off or sell any stocks, right? Yields are not going up. Right, right. And, you know, it's intriguing. You know, I don't I, – how, how was your traffic on the way in this morning? It was okay. Yeah. I, I was really surprised, Kevin. I just came in and – there was no traffic, and I said, wow, yep. did they start Thanksgiving early, which is real possible. The schools are closed. Yeah. Oh, That's, that makes sense. Yeah, the schools That's, are yeah. closed. Yeah. Right. Public schools are closed today right. in, around the Chicago area as well. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. I, mean, I mean, I get here early, so my traffic is always like coming in. Yeah. But I, I absolutely agree with you guys. I think we are in a early Thanksgiving holiday mode. I think... Where this market has moved in terms of percentages for the year, where it is, sits right now in terms of the all-time highs, I think this market is going to have a pretty calm November and December, end of November and early December into the end of the year. Unless, of course, some, something big breaks and, and changes it. But as of right now, you know, you've got a lot of money managers out there with some big percentage winners oh, on yeah. the table. 
Well, hey, what do you think? Uh, yesterday, uh, the Russell 2000, man, took off yeah. like a rocket ship. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we talked about it on yesterday's show, and it was all health care and IT. If you notice, okay. all the FANG stocks were strong yesterday. Yeah. And the healthcare sector w w w was really strong yesterday. So if you looked on the TD Ameritrade, on Thinkorswim platform, the heat map, yes. it was like Kelly Green across the page yeah. on, on the Russell yesterday. Yeah, so man, it, was, I mean, it was a broad-based market in the Russell. No, there's no doubt, man. They just went in hand over fist. I mean, yeah. and, you know, what happens, folks, is that that's how the Russell moves. I mean, when the Russell goes down, man, get out of the way. And the same when it goes up. And they, they, it, yeah. It and remember, mind, Kevin, now, actually, how fast where rates are right now in yields, it's doing it in many ways without some of the regional banks that are such a big part of the Russell. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's going up. The other sectors of the Russell are doing well, which is, you know, normally you can pretty much bet that if if rates are creeping higher, some of the regional banks are kind of lifting the Russell and doing a better job. But, you know, not so much in this environment. I mean, it's the other sectors that were the most green, for sure. Yeah, what happened with Dollar Tree, man? It's getting smoked out here this morning. You know, they're talking about, um, you know, China trade war and things oh, like that. And just okay. overall, yeah, they're, but I mean, Best Buy, we were, you know, we were very skeptical about Best Buy. They came in and did a great job. Dick's did a great job. Yeah. But Dollar Tree, interesting. You know, yeah. if I would have had to close my eyes and guess, I would have guessed Dollar Tree up, the other two down. Yeah, I guess. And it was I, the opposite. I just pulled Dollar Tree. The tariffs are hitting them. That's what's going on. So they're spread. Yep. The spread's getting eaten up by the tariffs. Uh, interesting. Yeah, which exactly. which would make sense. That's because when you're selling everything for what a dollar to five dollars. But, but, but from a trading perspective, guys, that's something to watch. If we get a level one, uh, or you know, a, a trade deal with China, watch Dollar Tree and see if it recovers based on that. Yeah, exactly. As to as to what the the tariff. And you know what? It's going to get interesting. Make a mental yeah. note. You know yeah. what to trade if you see a try a China trade deal get confirmed and signed. It might be Dollar Tree that might snap back. Yeah. So. And, and what does happen here, folks? This is what's really intriguing. This is it's public information um, on the Treasury side as to what the tariffs are. So it gets really intriguing because they they go from anywhere from like seven percent all the way up to twenty six point seven percent. So mm -hmm. what what does happen? There's no doubt is that. Those those bigger numbers, my twenty six cents out of every dollar is a much the number when you start talking about, you know, I guess the spreads have been better than that, but the reality is that a hundred thousand dollars you you'd be paying you know one hundred twenty six on the way in. So um, when that does happen, um, you know, I suspect we're going to get some. Well, you, you definitely get action in that because you imagine one second you're in business with one spread, and the next second it changes dramatically. Sure, you know. Um, yeah, and you know, and and I think people that trade Dollar Tree and are interested in that really want to see them start to make this family dollar. It's been such a messy merger when that happened. Okay. It really weighed on that company for a couple quarters, and now this. So it's just something else for them. So a uh, little trade deal, a little getting through the family dollar si situation might be might be a little uh, tailwind for that stock for sure. Yeah, and then you have like the high-end deals, the Tiffany deal, the you know that that's in a whole different world, man. That's like yeah, you know exactly. Yeah. Tiffany's is so tourism-related. It's amazing to me how they how much they put in tourism. No doubt. Listen, folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. Of course, we look forward to the program. 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank Kevin. You. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 25, NASDAQ's up 8, S&P's up 2.5. We'll come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 30, Nasdaq's up 10, S&Ps are up 2.5, and, and let's go see uh, how this pizza champ is up. Okay, I got to read this story. So this is Papa John's uh, ex-chairman. This is the guy that actually started Papa John's. The uh, headline is, Ousted Papa John's Chair Slams Pizza After Eating 40 in 30 Days. Let's see what he has to say. The so, sensational headline. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's see. <laughs> Papa John's International, notorious founder and former leader, lambasted the pizza chain publicly for the second time in as many months, naming a handful of executives that he said should be jailed. Jailed. Oh, my God. While calling the, out the new chief as having no pizza experience. Um, what is his name? Shatner? Schnatter, I think. John Schnatter. Schnatter. Okay. Who made comments in local media interview in Louisville, Kentucky, where the restaurant chain is based, also took a dig at the food quality. He, has, he said... He's eaten more than 40 pizzas in 30 days, and it's not the same pizza. The pizza chain, which got an investment earlier this year from activist investor star board, has been working to mount to come back. Well, man, it's not the same pizza. Yeah. I mean, he had multiple scandals he got pushed out for, so oh, yeah. he's not a happy camper, no. as you'd expect. No, he's not. But he's not. he left with billions, so. Yeah. 40 pizzas in 30 days. I could do that. <laughs> I bet you could. <laughs> I could definitely do that. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. And I don't think we're going to get any volume out here today. But uh, uh, bottom line is that uh, we have price going, that's for sure. You got, uh, well, Dollar Tree, that, that's smoke. That's down $17.50. That sure is. You get Dick's up $6.84. We got uh, Transocean's flat. Look at Disney. Oh, my God. So let's go look at Disney. Dis yeah. Disney's up again, $2.54. We talked about it yesterday on the show, right? Yeah. Frozen 2, and I'm sure there's more numbers even coming out. I think this morning we'll get over to the news, but um, they had a huge three-day opening for Frozen 2, and uh, internationally as well. It looks like on the heels of that, they just continue it. And now you come up to holiday season. Yeah. Everyone's going to be watching holiday movies. Sure. You know, I mean, pretty intense, actually. Can you go into the news for them? Yeah. yeah. I think that was that they... Yeah, so... <sighs> And this is 11.25, so let's see where 
So the Frozen 2 opened to a record worldwide sales for the animated picture, breaking the studio's own previous record set earlier the year by Toy Story 4. So you got Anna and Elsa, that Frozen franchise, 358.4 million globally in theaters this weekend. Um, that set a new record for the worldwide debut of an animated film. Yeah. And then, so look at this one. Two other films opened in wide release. The, uh, the new Sony picture about Mr. TV Rogers. I was wondering why I was Mr. reading about Mr. Rogers so TV's much. TV's Mr. Rogers, yeah. 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 Starring Tom Hanks and 21 Bridges, a, uh, 21 Bridges yeah. a police thriller from STX Entertainment. So the expectations were huge already. The, you know, Frozen has sold uh, you know, the amount of just merchandise alone I'm familiar with, um, let alone if you have kids. Uh, the sequel, the biggest animated movie of all time, were high. Disney was forecasting an opening weekend of $120 million in the U.S. And I think that came in, the, yeah, the American Tally was 130.3. So even with a huge expectation, they beat wow. the expectation on that. Um, the original Frozen is a tough act to follow that film. They had a couple of big voices in there. Indina, Indina Menzel, Kristen Bell, that was 1.27 billion in global ticket sales for that Frozen Stayed in the top five domestically for three months. And uh, animated pictures typically have a staggered release outside of the U.S., but Frozen 2 opened on the same day in 37 major markets, including China, France, Germany, and the U.K., making a big global total possible. And so there's, your, amazing, right? there's your lineup, right, in terms of uh, top ten films for the weekend. And uh, quite a difference between number one and number two there. As you got Frozen 2 at 130, yeah, and then you drop down to 15, 3, 9, so Look at the difference between yeah, that. Yeah, Mr. Rogers coming in at 13.3, and that looks like a great movie. Tom Hanks, Mr. Rogers, um, I plan on checking that out, whether in the yeah, theaters he'd, or he'd not. Yeah, he'd be good, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, no, I, I'm surprised you haven't seen, uh, you just probably don't watch enough TV because the ads have been everywhere, um, and so forth. And he does, he looks like a good Mr. Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that totally makes sense, no doubt. Yeah. Let's go th take a look at that bond market, because uh, bottom line, folks, is that it uh, doesn't matter where this market goes, meaning higher, these bonds want to continue higher. Uh, we go take a look at the 30-year, and, you know, once it got back inside the range again, the bottom line is that it's, look at this, I mean, it's, it looks like it wants to break the 160.29 again. And uh, you break that, then, listen, you can make the case that it's gained back to the highs again. So it's like, we hit 160.25 so far today. You have... Huge volume now, 233,000 inside the 30 year at 10 30 in the morning, folks, is a monster number. Man, look at yesterday. Yesterday, you came in with a monster number 640. Interesting, man. It's a big number. You're going into 547. We'll do 540. Well, 547, probably. If we go to the 30 year, we take a look at the 30 year. 30 year right now is up seven ticks. You're already at 1.5 million. Man, there's, there's a lot of movement in, inside these markets out here this morning. You know, that's a, that's a monster amount of volume, too. You look at yesterday, it did 2.8 million. So, yeah. When you're, you're laying out at uh, 1.73 right now. Let's bring it over so yeah. I can see. Because uh, right in the middle of kind of that range that we, you know, whether it was at 2%, we started some of that volatility. We're back down. We went all the way down to 1.457 at one point. You're yeah. kind of sitting right in the middle of that three months. You back it up to six months. And I believe we're going to be towards the lower bit because within six, we we're actually as high as 2.32 on the 10-year right. at one point. And, uh, oh, boy, you want to see some crazy things. How about a year? 3% at one point on the 10-year. We're sitting at 1.73. And how about the curves? Curves are always interesting. We got a... Uh, not inverted anymore, that's for sure, man. No. Two years sitting at 1.578, the 10-year 1.731. Remarkable, not that long ago that those were inverted. I know. Yeah. And then housing. So check this out. This is a big number. I haven't read this one yet, but this is a big number. Let's see. So you got buyers snapped up U.S. homes over the past two months, the fastest pace in 12 years, adding to signs of a sturdy housing demand and amid lower prices and borrowing costs. Single-family homes ran at an annualized rate of 733,000 in October, topping all estimates in the Bloomberg survey following an upward revision of 738,000 in September. Yeah, two strongest readings since July of 2007, and the median sales price decreased, though. Yeah. 
from something to keep your eye on there, man. Three point five percent. So well, you get the West you, Coast coming down. You have New York coming down. Big big numbers. The, these these big markets that have been on fire. Do you know what I mean? But everything is like a million, two million, three million. Sure. They, they've been hurting. I mean, oh, the, big time. the supply of those houses, you know, at those levels, is pretty huge yeah. out there. That's the real bottom line. Yeah. Uh, so look, look at this one. This is just pretty wild. Even with the, the gains, the pace of new home sales remained well below levels reached during the housing boom of 2000s when purchases peaked at 1.39. But I think they're talking about 2007, 2006 when everything was fraudulent. So uh, 2000s in general. Yes. Yeah, so, right. so leading up to that, I would yeah. say probably. Right. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials right now. Trading up 25, that 38, the Nasdaq is up 14, S and P's up three and a half, gold is flat, silver's up four cents, notes and bonds, 10 years up seven ticks, 30's up 21. I'm right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 23. Nasdaq's up 12. S&Ps are up one and a half. So let's go over to Best Buy and see uh, what they're saying, right? BBY. We always talk about it. Winners and losers, man. We got a winner in Best Buy today. That's yeah. for sure. They continue to... Uh, they got a 52-week high, I believe, today. Wow. Yeah. 
Look at that. That's quite a surge, man. It sure is. Okay, so let's see what they have to say. Yeah, maybe that top one. So comp sales in the U.S. rose 2%, easily beating analyst expectations. And uh, Best Buy comp sales in the U.S. I mean, look at some of these numbers, man. Just uh, staggering comp sales reported across the board, right? I mean, look at, look at some of where they've come from, man. You know, going back to, this is... July? Yeah. That's uh, last year, July, I okay. believe. But, you know, you're at 5%. These are quarterly. I know year-over-year domestic same-store sales, comp sales. I mean, just staggering in terms of keeping doing that. Best Buy, let's see. They don't have all the numbers. Talk about winners and losers. Let's see if we can get back and find the... Scroll down. Here we go. So let's see, fourth quarter revenue, uh, it just kind of straddles where they were supposed to come in at 15.01. They had 14.75 to 15.15. Gross margin is running the same, 24.2 versus 24.5. Not bad. So here's fiscal year earnings per share, 581 to 591. Yeah. That's well above the 560 to 575. Fiscal year comp sales, 1 to 2 percent. Yeah, third quarter, they come in at comp sales of 1.7. They're only looking for 1.2. Third quarter earnings per share, 113 versus 103. I've got the, you know, the market's looking at this like, hey, it, their biggest quarter is right, it's coming up now. So this is pretty impressive coming into your biggest quarter. Definitely. Right? And that's yeah. where you see the fiscal year guidance, right? So they're talking right. about their quarter. Best Buy probably right. sees it coming down the line as well. Right. Um, and then third quarter domestic comparable online sales up 15 mm percent. -hmm. That's a big one. Yeah. So online growth for sure. That's a big one for sure. Now, uh, Dollar Tree. Let's see what's oh happening there. Not yeah. so much there. I think that that, that, that top line on the, on the news <coughs> Excuse me. was pushing tariffs, but let's see what they have to say. Dollar Number seven. Tree. There we go. So Dollar Tree folks down $16.59. This no doubt uh, is a little mess out here. Huh. No okay. doubt indeed. Toasted in one day. They, and, as you say, toasted and roasted. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, okay, so Dollar Tree uh, shares fell the most since March 2018 after the budget retailer trimmed its outlook on 2019 profits, citing tariffs on Chinese imports that will increase the cost of goods. Yeah, so earnings per share now only 466 to 476. They had previously forecasted 490 to 511. Tariffs driving the forecast reduction. Dollar Tree also citing higher wages in its distribution centers, a global helium shortage. I guess they're using a lot of helium, uh, and higher sales in low margin items so listen to this oh man this is so wild about helium so check this out folks so, okay when i do open houses right i used to always get balloons right and i'd get them from dollar tree because they're so okay. inexpensive they're a pack of balloons okay okay so before i'd go i just stopped it well i called them up and they'd have them ready okay sure but check it out the there this is amazing that's in there but it totally makes sense because the balloon business for them is a monster business. Okay. And what would end up happening is that sometimes they would be out of helium. It would drive me crazy. Okay. And that's why I should really start calling, making sure that they had the helium. But they'd be out of helium a lot. Okay. You know, and they'd say, okay, this store has the helium, this store doesn't. Okay. So it's pretty amazing at a buck a piece. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to know how many balloons they sell, but if they're putting it in there, it's like, okay. Yeah, man, that's, that's interesting. Isn't it, it crazy? Is to, to actually cite it. Yeah. So just getting down into some of the more numbers, we talked about fiscal year earnings per share. They missed as in coming in at 466 to 476 now. They were at 490 to 411. Fourth quarter earnings, buck 70 to buck 80. They were looking for a buck 94 in the fourth quarter. They're seeing fourth quarter net sales of 6.33 to 6.44. The estimate had been at 6.4, so a little bit below. Fiscal year net sales, I mean, just that's a lot of dollar sales at the dollar it store. Is. For 23.62 to 23.74. And um, below the range of 23.57 to 23.79. Um, yeah. Comp sales in the quarter, 2.5. They were looking for 2.6. But just kind of misses across the board, right? Yeah. Because earnings per share for the current quarter, they come in in line. Buck 08 versus buck 08. But they miss on almost everything versus we just covered Best Buy. They almost beat on almost everything. Yeah. yeah. And then let's go to Dick's. So. Yeah. They delivered. Yeah. In a big way, for sure. And that's. Number 12. 
So that's up six dollars and ninety five cents. So that's quite a surge, sure huh? Sure is, man. Those stores are so big too. It's they amazing. sure are, but they ain't cheap. Is, is that that's what's going oh on? for sure? Okay. I, I, that's what I would okay. say. Um, not cheap at all. You know, I've gone in there to buy whether it's some lightning gear, right? You get some some jerseys, okay. whether it's outdoor sporting. Um, canoes, they got everything in there, yeah, man. Yeah, they do. And um, it is not a discount store <laughs> for sure. Okay, so the company expects full year earnings of 350 to 360. They had forecast at 330 to 345. Yeah, yeah. just raising the forecast, yeah. man. They came in with third quarter earnings 52 cents. Expectation was 38. I mean, percentage wise, that's, that's that's a staggering number, man. They beat by 30, 35 percent. Yeah, they're showing no ill effects from the, the stop selling guns. Yep. The company uh, remains a strategic review of its hunting business as it continues to lobby for stricter gun laws. Earlier this year, Dix said it was removing hunting gear and guns from the 125 stores nationwide, about 17% so, of the chain. Yeah. Wow. So they were just kind of um, experimenting a bit to see how that played out. And um, So is that saying that they took them out of 17% of the, of the stores? I believe so. Okay, okay. Cool. Yep, that right. they took them out of 125 stores yeah. as a first. Yeah experiment to see how that played out um, which represented 17 percent yeah. of the stores so if we take a look at this you're gonna see there's no doubt you get the monster ABC up so you get 4150 it's 10 bucks but it's already there it's already at 47 that would be the, the price projection look at this is breaking out of consolidation when's that go back to whoops but, May, May of 2017. Yeah, two and a half years ago. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that w when you actually look at some of these equities folks, okay, they can, you know, the ups and downs of them, I mean, they're pretty amazing. Yeah, it six, sure is. $62 in 2016. Yep. $23 in 2017. That's almost two years ago to the, uh, to the day, to the month it is. But, wow. Yeah, and you almost got a two-bagger from there, man. Double almost exactly, 100%. Over two years, Mark yeah. has done some staggering things over those two oh, years as well. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. No Seriously. Doubt about that. So let, let's go into the uh, tomorrow. We'll still get oil in numbers tomorrow because it's the following day. That's the, I believe uh, so. Never quite confident because yeah. things get thrown so in array in terms of closed Thursday, half a day Friday. But I right. believe you're right. We should. We usually get the numbers on Wednesday at 1030 for crude. I believe that's probably, you know what, well, if we go into Whisper, they'll give us, uh, oh yeah, okay, good. They'll so give us the exact numbers. You're up 31 cents right now. Okay, so it's the top of the range. Talk about some movement, man, since that run on crude. We were down at almost 50 bucks, now we're flirting with running up to 60. Yeah, big time. And let's see. Yep, crude yeah. oil coming down the line at 10.30 tomorrow. They're looking for a decrease of between about 800,000, 400,000 barrels. Stay right there, folks. Tell me I'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We have the uh, Dow Industrials uh, up 25, Nasdaq up 12, S&P is up 3, and we will have uh, oil numbers tomorrow. We sure will. Then, so, yeah, yeah. just so we get crude as we normally would 1030 on Wednesday, but what they've done with Thursday being closed, they've bumped up natural gas a day early. So we get natural gas at noon tomorrow as well. And natural gas, they're looking for a decrease in the stockpiles as well. Survey number, median analyst survey number, looking for a decline of 24 BCFs. The whisper number, minus 27, and jumping back to that crude number, looks like the analyst, uh, that's just, no, no, that way, that's just Cushing. Uh, crude number, minus 878,000 for the median analyst estimate, okay. and then the whisper number, which is a number that kind of gets correlated through the Bloomberg terminal, yeah. looking for maybe a slight less of a decrease, but still nonetheless a decrease of minus 480. And what was the gas now? Uh, gas is natural gas right here. Yeah. Minus 24 to 27 BCFs. Yeah, so, so check this out with natural gas, too. Nat, poor natural gas, man, is getting hammered all over the place. The, the Wall Street Journal had a, had a great article. And what it's about is that the methane gas, right, from all the, the, the farmers, right, what has happened now is that they're getting more efficient in the aspect of getting rid of the methane gas, okay? Okay. Because picture, you know, you get these farms, folks, with like, I don't know if there's 500,000 pigs or a million pigs or whatever. Sure, okay. lots of them, Huge yeah. amount, okay. And it's always been a problem that if you've ever seen, years ago I read this book, the, the bottom line is that these places fall apart in a second. Doorknobs fall apart. Yeah, the amount of methane that is yeah. uh, released from, you know, farms, from, from animal huge. cultivation is, right. is uh, a tremendous amount. Right. Yeah. And so what the, what the article is about is that now they're harnessing that methane okay. and selling the methane. Hey, got to man. I, I know. Not? Technology. I mean, technology it's not, it's not does like a lot of things. not like enough gas, but think about that. You know what I mean? It's hey. like, okay, you know, now. No matter what, it's a, all it comes down to is whether you can harness it, package it, and sell it for less than what it's going, man. Totally. if you can do and it at, at two bucks and, and the market's at two, 201, yep. guess what? You better do it, man, because you're leaving a penny on the table. And that was a byproduct before. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about a byproduct. So what happens in this area we live, folks, Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, um, we have a lot of great grouper, okay? Grouper's a big fish around here, Big yes. fish. So check this out. Someone figured out about sometime last year that first they used to call them grouper wings, and then they call them, they're actually grouper cheeks, okay? So of the grouper, have you seen this in a restaurant? Yet? I have not. Okay, this is pretty cool. So what, what the fishermen, what the restaurant folks have done is that, you know, of course, you're using every part of the fish, right? As long as people are going to buy it, right? And let me tell you something. <laughs> if you like fish, the, what has happened is that this has turned into a real... Grouper cheeks are unbelievable. And 
they evidently they, they there's two little fat pots and now they're doing them as as appetizers okay for like 495 595 okay at, you know island way or these big big restaurants okay um and it's just pretty amazing man um you know that all of a sudden guess what Fish is worth more money. Yeah, they're, they're not going to throw it away. I was trying to, to get find some pictures. Yeah, I was trying to Groupies. find even uh, an article just to bring it. Let's see, news. They, they don't. They don't have a lot of news articles on Grouper Cheeks. Let me see. If right. It, it's, they. It sounds even weird, man. The first so, time it was, it was like, oh, I don't know if I want one. Then, okay, we go all the way back. Uh, have you tried Grouper Cheeks? But nonetheless, I just we'll we'll pull it over, man. I just uh, googled it. Considered to be a delicacy in many parts of the world. Tasty, tender fillets range from an uh, in, inch and a half to three inches in diameter. Can be used for a variety of recipes. Ship frozen limited. And this is right. this is this is a seafood place talking up the delicacy of right. their own products. So right. keep that in right. mind. And they're not frozen down here because they're fresh. Yes, yeah. that's, that's what's going on. Yeah, but they've been around for a while, I guess. So what you're just seeing them on more menus. That's they're your... in restaurants now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. It's, it's like <laughs> same deal. Yeah. You know. I yeah. mean, efficiencies. Yes, hey, if you can sell it, they'll, they'll, they'll sell you the feet if you're going to eat it, man. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no. Let's go take a look at the gold contract. So, you know, we get a shot in trading week, folks. Always dangerous, particularly because gold's been going down. Now, bottom line out here today, we get something that's not bad. We you know the last swing low out here was 1446.20. We got down to 1449.60, and it's rejected lower price. So that's impressive. You know, we'll see whether you can stay above that. Uh, but you always got to be ready in this holiday week that, man, they can just smoke this thing in a second. Um, if we go over to the, I was looking at the pound a little bit earlier. And they, okay. And the pound is pulling back. I mean, the, the pound still looks good, but there's some sellers in that pound. We, it was hanging at that 129, and eh, I guess it's not bad. So the, the last swing point out here is 128.24. Uh, at 128.60. The euro, of course, which is the largest weighting structure, that's not moving. That's just yeah. 110. And then if we go over to the yen and we take a look at the yen, the yen correlation is just basically with, uh, okay, so, so the yen got up to the uh, 109.21 and just off it slightly. 109 here is dangerous out there. There's no two ways about it. For, for the gold market, that's, that's what it's dangerous for. You know, it's interesting. I'm just going to jump over all the markets, actually. We had quite a print overnight. I'm not sure if you I saw know, it. I know, I did. Yeah. So maybe that was some of the trade optimism reporting. I'm just waiting for this chart it, to catch yeah, up. Yeah, because it was a call made, right? Yeah, I believe from, um, let me just get the article, because I believe that's what it's going to be. Um, in terms of U.S.-China trade talks, so you had Lou talking to Lighthizer, I believe. Okay. So China's top trade negotiator, Lu, Lu He, Lu He, talks to Lighthizer Mnuchin about resolving core issues. The print on that article, 8.55 p.m. Eastern Time last night. And if you uh, correlate things, go back to the ES chart, we got quite a print, man. And that correlates to 8.45 p.m. Eastern looking Time at. last night. So you got quite a pop. This is a five-minute bar. No, 15-minute yeah. bar we're looking at. So that would encompass from 8.45 until 9 o'clock. Yeah. You get a print. But guess what, man? In the span of a half hour, you were back down to about 31.36, 31.35. We trailed off to a low at 4 a.m. of 31.28. But uh, yeah. the high at 10 a.m. right now was 31. 38.25, and we're within a point of that intraday high right now in the S&Ps, but quite a print, 31.45 yeah. on that S&P, man. And they all went, all the Yes, they did. The NASDAQ, was, Dow, yeah. they all read at 8.45 last night, had a, had a high print up there. Big numbers. How about jumping around some news? You see some Fed speak this morning? So we got Powell, as we load, saying that the Fed is strongly committed to 2% inflation goal, a sign that rates are likely to hold steady. Uh, the remarks are further indication the central bank is unlikely to raise rates anytime soon. And then you also had Dallas Fed's Kaplan out there saying that uh, a ballooning debt could suddenly become a big issue for an economy. You know what? Um, we should be able to figure that one out on our own. You don't have to be a Fed chairman uh, to figure out that the debt at 22, 20 what trillion yeah. could at some point become a problem if uh, rates begin to rise. You know, we're at full employment. You're not supposed to be running a trillion dollar deficit at record unemployment. You know, there's a time 
In 2008, 2009, we're losing a million jobs a month, okay? Right. That's when the government might step in, be okay with maybe having a deficit at that time. It's not supposed to be when not the market the, is yeah. at all-time highs, record unemployment, and we can't pay for anything that we're doing. And he, he, realistically, they almost can't go up because that's the quickest way that that's not going to get paid back. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up 34. NASDAQ up 16. S&P's up 3.5. We got one of our targets in the den uh, looking, saying uh, OB1, uh, the gold contract, and the silver contract likely bottoming now today. Yeah, I like how it's set up. Uh, <laughs> that being said, inside this holiday week, uh, they can move this. When I say they, it's just, you know, it's everyone in general, basically. But I've seen some monster movements. So I, I like the idea we have rejection today. That's for sure. Um, you know, we'll see where this shakes out in the next few days. Because, you know, tomorrow you got half of it. No, tomorrow's a full day. Yep. Thursday. Closed. Thursday, we're closed, but markets in Europe are still open. Yes. Asia's still open. Friday, you get that half a day. Yeah. And uh, it's like, okay, you know, we, it's this, this, these currency moves can really basically shake the market for sure. And you know, you talk about currency moves here, watch this. This is, uh, this is intriguing too. The Brazilian real, I was looking at this. The ERL. Yeah, yeah, this morning. 
And this thing is getting really weak, man. Um, it's like, when you wrap your head around this currency sometimes, it's pretty cool because you can almost figure out where you want to go on vacation sometimes. Oh, that's where it really matters, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, so if we go back to January of 2018, it was 3.1 reals to one US dollar. Yeah. And now we're at 4.2. So what is that? That's 33%, right? Pretty big, yep. Yeah. And, and you bring a dollar over there two years ago, you got three reals. Yeah. You bring a dollar over there today, you got $4.25. $4 and look at oh. this. This is, looks to me, this might be the weakest it's been in a long time. It is. Pretty intense. Stay right there, folks. We get Think of Swim coming up next. Then we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes. Dave White, I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Okay. Yeah, go get him, folks.